This episode of the YN Crew Podcast is brought to you by Times Cineplex. Hey guys, welcome back once again to another episode of the Wine Crew Podcast. It's me, Kevin, once again, speaking to you on this mic, on this podcast where we talk about all things movies, especially movies that are playing here in Brunei, Darussalam. First up, it's my co-host. He's back. It's Timmy. Hey, I, I, I was back last week, right? Well, yeah. no. We, ago. All of us were not here last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. We hey, all I'm took back. A, <laughs> <laughs> we all took a break because we had a huge, huge show, show on the 1st of March and we had 700 People? people come to watch our stand-up comedy. And you are now a superstar. I, I mean, if you say so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's the Instagram count now? Uh, it's Tibby Bear. T-I-B-B. No, no, the count. <laughs> oh, Bear. No. Oh, how many, yeah, how many uh, followers did 1, you get? 1,050 now, I think. Verified. So, so you are like you are like proper famous. No, I'm not among I'm everyone in proper this room. famous. <laughs> I'm just what? is that I'm Amos level okay. famous? <laughs> I'm just okay. All right. Up next, it's the other co-host of the podcast. He's also back. It's Dell. Hello. What's up? I'm back. You're back. Uh, nothing's up. <laughs> nothing's up. <laughs> Ceilings up. Uh, I don't know. New supermarket open in town. <laughs> <laughs> Today, right? Yeah. Okay. Really? Where? How do you What's think it? you did on the last show, the br- the last Bruhaha comedy show? I was told I was funny. You were told you were funny. Well, I, I'm telling you again, you were funny. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel? I'll, I'm okay. I didn't think I was uh, that funny, but... Oh, so you're like, okay lah? <laughs> yeah. Okay lah. Okay, All right. Can, can, can. <laughs> sure. Can, can. Yeah. That's a great intro. Anyway, up next is that a co-host of the podcast. It's Kai. Sup, Kev. Sup. How did you do last week? Uh, I did all right, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I did all right, yeah. How about you? You did good? Yeah. I, did, I did very well. Yeah, I, I, did. In my opinion. Ah, oh, thanks. But that's just me. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be the opposite of Tibby. I'm trying to stay humble. Right. Yeah. Well, you did really well yourself. If if I should say so. No, no. I th- I think I did right. Yeah. <laughs> he did two sets. All this modesty is in killing me. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't understand no. what's going on here. Two this sets. is yeah. nice. okay. Okay, I'll just repeat what people have said. <laughs> <laughs> Which is? Which is? Uh, they thought I was a revelation. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. People no, said that. No, that he said that. No. Okay. no. I, now I'm changing it. I think you just did okay lah. Yeah. Anyway, no. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't agree with anybody. Anyway. <laughs> moving on. It's that co-host out of cast she's also back it's nazu hey what's up everyone's trying to be like humble like hey what's up no one's on this like <laughs> cloud this nine newfound fame <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what to do with it <laughs> how did you do and how are you in general well i thought everyone did great so compared to them i did all right <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand the levels that we're trying to do here uh, anymore uh, they did matter. really good all like, right the headliners were spectacular Okay, so. and um, let's move on to the last co-host for this episode of the podcast. She's back. It's Nikkei. Hello. Hello. And for the record, I think I did amazing last <laughs> week. <laughs> yes, you did. You did amazing. We couldn't do that well without you. That is true. Yeah. Okay, yes. if, if you're sort of wondering what we're talking about, we had a big show last week. It was our biggest show for Bruhaha Comedy Brunei. We had more than 700 people in attendance for our show, which was the headline show. And yeah, I, I think all of us had uh, good fun and we'd like to thank everyone out there who came to the show for showing up and supporting us, you know, your local talents. And uh, because comedy is a new thing in Brunei, it, it means a lot that you all came out to see us. Anyway, on this week's episode of the show, we'll be giving you our review of Captain Marvel, which is the first Marvel Studios movie coming out this year. There's only two. There's yes. three. There's three. I mean, if you include Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, but we this do is... We include Spider-Man. We do. <laughs> <laughs> On this yes. podcast, we do. <laughs> On this yes. podcast, we do. One of three movies coming out this year. There's a cloud of controversy surrounding it. It's it's a little bit of a politically correct thingy that's been spun on by Brie Larson herself, but we'll get more into that later on in the show. First up, let's do our weekly segment, which is the news. Did you guys check out that poster of Godzilla and God, uh, Godira? Ghidorah. 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 It's late. We had a release of a Japanese poster, and I know you all saw it because I showed it to you before we recorded. Yes. Let's take your take on it, Tarek. Uh I saw the poster, and my first reaction was, 
I didn't know Picasso was still alive. Mm. <laughs> so you're saying it's like a work of art? <laughs> it is. It's, it's amazing. Uh, Dell's cringing. Dell's cringing, but we'll get to Dell. Doesn't know Picasso. Is. <laughs> we'll get to Dell later. TB, what, what, just like your general thoughts on the poster. I I thought it was a very good poster if it was a monster game. <laughs> which means I would definitely watch it because I like monsters. Oh right, okay, like sure. huge monsters, like right. destroying cities. Yeah, that's my favorite. Well, <laughs> we we see the Capitol building in Washington, and yeah. it's like destroyed and on fire. So th- that gives you a hint of what's gonna happen in this movie. Obviously, Nazu. I thought it looked very Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's called the Japanese poster. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, it looked like you know all those Japanese monster movie posters. Yeah. so I liked it. Okay, uh, Nikkei. I agree with Nas. It has the feel of a Japanese monster movie. Mm. Yeah, it could be anything. Yeah, but Japanese it's not, monster movie. This is like a big Japan. Hollywood thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And finally, because he's gonna like, he's just gonna throw a wrench in this whole thing. Dell. What wrench? I'm just delivering the truth. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> this poster. The wrench of a truth. The the headline says a Japanese poster, and I looked at it. Yeah, it's a Japanese poster because the Godzilla itself looked like a rubber monster that was you know from way back in the day when uh, when Godzilla was still in TV in black and white mm-hmm. that's what it looked like to you okay yeah, yeah. in art we call it homage <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I am very excited for this movie. It's coming out in the month of May. Yeah. Uh, 31st May to be 31st exact. 31st of May. It will probably get a couple of days early in Brunei, but we'll be sure to give you a review on that. Very, very excited for that. We also got a leaked image of Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, what happened was someone had got like these print guides that they send to like toy manufacturers and people who want to do promos for the movies. And it, it really just shows the full Sonic the Hedgehog look. And I, I don't know what to say about this. He just reminds me more and more of like Grover because he's hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Grover is actually my favorite. I, I read character. somewhere it, the the problem they had was the eyes. The eyes. Because in the cartoons, he had really big eyes yeah, yeah. that touches the other eye. Like one eye touches the okay, other eye. Okay, yeah, I, I get so that. So they wanted to make it a little more realistic. So they made it what it is in the picture. Okay. So it's separated. That why it looks weird. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the photo now and it, what you're saying is true. They, there was an animated series that came yeah. out and even on the box uh, art yeah. covers of the yep. games where the eyes were more, really big. Like, really big. Like and Dragon Ball type of... Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I mean, I get what you're trying to say that they're trying to make this look more realistic but to be honest, we've seen like a photorealistic Sonic the Hedgehog even just for a bit uh, when we saw Ready Player Reckon- One. Oh, uh, oh really? yeah. Yeah, yeah Ready, Ready Player, Player One. one yeah. and, and that looked okay to me. It was very, you know, true to the game and the cartoons. I mean, it, it blows my mind that there's a studio out there that goes, all right, we're going to spend $120 million making this movie of a hedgehog with really long legs that can run and with fur Three. with fur but we gotta make sure he looks realistic <laughs> he's already not the normal color of a right? hedgehog right like this blue hedgehog by the way <laughs> but he's gotta look realistic that blows my mind hmm. I'm not so excited about this I'll, I'll wait till I get like a trailer and then I'll make what my mind what was the name of the what's the name of the villain the villain uh, yeah Dr. 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 Robotnik uh, Dr. Robotnik. Robotnik yeah the one with the crazy mustache right yeah. the thing is I, I love Sonic as a kid Sonic Knuckles and then there was uh, the Knuckles the squirrel uh, no, sorry. The Tails. 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 Sorry, yeah. yeah. So I, I grew up really liking this story, but then I, I can't even pretend to be interested in this. At all? No, it's just, I'm not even watching it. Really? I will yeah. watch it. Hmm. I'll watch it. Childhood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once they announce uh, Ryan Reynolds is voicing it, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Chris Evans. Just like every other animated character that's coming out. Yeah. Uh, we will, of course, you're talking about the new uh, Pikachu, uh, Detective, Detective Pikachu, Pikachu movie Pikachu. where he voices Pikachu. We got a trailer this week also for a movie that I am very excited for, which is a movie called Brightburn, which is produced by James Gunn, who has been let go from the MCU and is written by his brothers, uh, yeah. two of his brothers. Billy Gunn. Uh, that's a talented the, family. It's a talented family. Yeah. Is it Billy Gunn? His brother's called Billy Gunn. Uh, Brian and oh. Mark Gunn. Well, Billy Gunn. <laughs> Billy the Gunn. <laughs> Billy Gunn. Billy, Billy Gunn, Gunn was an outlaw. <laughs> that was no. Billy the Kid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that was Billy the Kid. My bad. You're right. He is a wrestler. Yeah. Billy, Billy Gunn was a wrestler. Yeah. Um, we saw this trailer before we started rolling the tape on this uh, recording. I think that the second trailer really sets up the whole movie, and it's just making me so excited to watch it. It's coming out. I think the week before we get Godzilla: King of the Monsters. Nice. Um, this looks really good it looks really good like Dell was someone who I was sort of watching as he was watching this trailer and all, the whole while I was going yep. isn't that a little weird that you are <laughs> looking at me while I no, was Del, looking I, at something I, I was looking at you as well <laughs> 
because you, you the are, most opinionated one. You yeah. are the barometer for, <laughs> right. for certain things. So after watching the first one, yeah, it didn't do anything for me. I thought it was like a very B-grade kind of uh, horror movie that's trying to be a superhero kind of comic book movie. And then this trailer came out and it looked totally different. It looked more like a suspense horror thriller kind of flavor. And the vibe it gives is much better than the first one. So yeah, I'm going to watch this now. Yeah, this is more like shocking and, you know, it's terrifying to see mm. what yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering how they end up killing him. Well, wow. that's the why you have to pay how many dollars to watch the <laughs> to movie. Watch Four dollars on a Monday afternoon. Right. All right. On a Thursday. <laughs> yeah. So we talked about Brightwind, which is uh, essentially a movie exploring what could have happened if Superman was evil. That leads us to the DCEU. And there are some first impressions of Shazam. And, Shazam. Uh, Shazam. <laughs> Shazam. And the people who have got these early screenings say that it's, it's a bit weird, but it's a fun delight. Yeah, so uh, I was, I'm kind of obsessed with this movie at this point. I was reading some reviews and depending on who, which critic you align yourself with, uh, the critic that I quite like listening to is from The Rap. His name's, how, how am I forgetting him? I worked for him for like four months. Uh, El Mayimbe, Umberto Gonzalez. He said that it is honestly one of the finest things the DC EU has ever done. So it's one of the best. Yeah, yeah. So there's been comparisons to, um, there's been comparisons to the Christopher Reeve movies. Wow. Like how it's very filled with heart. It's charm, it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got charm. So, yeah, pretty excited for this. Okay. Anyone else excited for this movie, Shazam, which is coming I, out? I yes. Am. The trailer was so funny. I was I was just laughing at that trailer. Actually, speaking of trailers, we actually got like another trailer. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. Last, last week, sorry. Yeah. It's so good. The trailer is so good. Oh, mm. so good. Okay, so we're all excited for that. Uh, let's move it along and still sticking with someone who is in the DCEU, if this news is correct. And that is that Will Smith is no longer returning for yeah. uh, the role of Deadshot for Suicide Squad 2. And he will be replaced by Idris Elba. Yeah. Ooh. This is a... I, I think this is okay, Yeah. Uh, I think it's because Will Smith is playing, a, doing a movie where he's playing the father to Venus and Serena Williams. Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah, that biopic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's why Will Smith can. And There's like Bad scheduling Boys. conflicts and, and yes, yeah, yeah. Bad, Bad Boys, Boys 4. Four? Three? Three. Three. Four. Three. Can't remember three. now. Three. 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 Depending on three goes, maybe four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. What, what do you think of, you know, the DCEU snatching up Idris Elba to play Deadshot? Mm, uh, he's a great see, actor. Let me see yeah. can't be Green Lantern. Which I'm fine with because <gasps> they shouldn't even touch that franchise. <laughs> 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 they did. Okay. We see all what happened. <laughs> But he's already in MCU. I mean, he is dead yeah. in the MCU. Spoilers, by the way. Zachary yeah. Levi was in the MCU too. Yeah. That is and true. In the second also. Tour movie. Or was and it the second and third? Second and third yeah. Tour movie. What was he as? He was Fandral. Oh. One of the Warriors 3. One of the oh. Warriors, yeah. He's cute. He wasn't even on the, the, the screen. The Robin Hood. Mm. Long, right? No, no, no. He, in the third one, he was there for like two minutes. Yeah. And then and his he character died. died, yeah. Okay, speaking of Suicide Squad 2, the list of James Gunn's members for Suicide Squad 2 has been revealed and it's it's a couple of characters who I'm not familiar with. I'm, I'm going to read them out in a bit. Joel Kinnaman is reprising his role as Rick Flagg, but there are going to be four new characters and these characters are Ratcatcher, King Shark, Polka Dot Man and Peacemaker. Who are these guys? So these are like the C-list characters <laughs> in uh, C-list villains in uh, the DC comics. But King Shark is actually a formidable one because yeah. he's a Flash villain. Um, is he a shark? He's, he's an a actual shark. Man, shark. Yeah. As in, wait, top half or bottom yeah, half? Like, uh, top white. half shark. Yeah. He's, he's, okay, so th- there, are diff- there are different incarnations. Like oh, if you watch shark. the Arkham Asylum, yeah. he doesn't look like a shark, but he has like the jaw of the shark. Yeah. 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 He's bottom shark. <laughs> but he's... <laughs> That's a mermaid cap. Mermaid. That's a mermaid. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm I'm excited to see Polka Dot Man only because he sounds ridiculous. But, yeah. But all... then again, if you think about it, if James Gunn is taking this character, I think it suits James Gunn. Like what James Gunn can do with it, like what James Gunn will do, or how he will bring this character to the big screen. Yeah. Because we saw what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy, and he made them yeah. household names. Rocket yeah. Raccoon, a talking mm. raccoon. But for the Guardians credit that was the core team from the beginning I think the reason why this is happening is because Warners is trying to distance themselves from the first few batch of movies that they made mm. under the DCEU so they're going like look like you can call it Suicide Squad but just don't use those exact same characters we'll just let people kind of understand that this is the same but different 
Same but different. So it's yeah. kind of like, look, this is like still the Suicide Squad, but sillier. Yeah. And apparently bit. Harley Quinn is going to come back in a very small role. Aww, yeah. What? That's, that's apparently in the news as well. Yeah. <laughs> she died it? No, no because no. she's doing Birds of Prey oh, right now. Oh, yes. And then there's going to be Gotham City Sirens. So that way she has like a trilogy. That's not confirmed, Gotham City Sirens. I think that's scrapped. Uh, I no? think no, B- Bad Girl scrap. She's not a bird. Yeah, yeah, Bad Girl, yeah. but this one as well, no. No, no, I, th- I think this is depending on Birds of Prey. Ah, uh. yeah. Uh. Anyway, Disney are set to launch their streaming service, which has been a long time coming. We've talked about this many times in the podcast, and they have announced that they will be including the entire Disney Motion Picture Library on their streaming service. But what about Daredevil, though? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's all what Asking the right questions. going to be <laughs> yeah. talking about. I think the only thing I'm kind of excited for to have Disney Plus for is eventually when we get that Obi Wan show. Oh! Uh, <laughs> My biggest question is that they said the entire Disney Motion Picture Library. Does this include the other studios that they own, like Bonavista and Touchstone? Uh, I would really think it would be depending on... On the content, right? Yeah. Yeah, The movie Um, itself. I think this would be kind of all the cartoons you've seen, plus the movies that you know. PG-13? Yeah. So I think it would depend on that. Well, it doesn't matter because I I highly doubt we're going to get this here in Brunei. (laughs) <laughs> no, we probably won't. Maybe not initially, mm. but if they, you know, if they want to take on Netflix, they'll probably, you know, roll out to certain Asian countries. And Brunei might be just be there because we sort of leech off Singapore, mm-hmm. you yeah. know. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's move it along. And you mentioned Star Wars. You mentioned Obi Wan. Someone who is in the Star Wars universe, Oscar Isaac, he says that he wants to play Apocalypse? the lead character. <laughs> he wants to play the lead character so in a Metal blind. Gear Solid movie. Wow. He'd be perfect. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oscar. As like a he wants snake? to play Solid Snake. Yeah, he wants to play Solid Snake. He's Kylo Ren, right? No. No. Oh, Poe Dameron. Oh, Poe Dameron. Oh, Poe Dameron. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see it. Yeah. You yeah. see it? Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. He's got the jawline. That's what's important. Yeah. yeah. Does he has the voice though? Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I mean, you just get David Hater to voice over. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel. Colonel. <laughs> I'm sure he can do it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Did all of you guys He's play um, uh, yeah. uh, Metal Gear Solid? Yeah, yeah. I I no. played all the way to 4. I finished 4. Then I tried playing 5 and I realized it was a joke, so I stopped. <laughs> oh. I didn't finish the latest one. Who's yeah. got the PS3 one? Lend me. Uh, I got I got all three, all oh. four of them on PS3. All three? three? Cool. All right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> well, they'll sell for the next four months. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I was thinking with Disney, we saw one of the scenes in the latest Wreck-It Ralph movie, which is Ralph Breaks the Internet. And there was one scene that has fans sort of clamoring and rallying to get its own movie. And it's that Disney princess scene. Now, oh, there have right. been calls to the studio to say, come on, you guys need to make a Disney princess movie. The directors of Ralph Breaks the Internet have sort of mentioned that like, yeah, we're kind of interested in doing a movie for the Disney princesses. Wow, I'm excited. In like the record Ralph yeah, universe? In, in that yeah, oh. in that universe. Oh, okay. So they go off on their own adventures, I guess. Okay. I so this is the Avengers of Disney. <laughs> <laughs> the shared universe. Wow. So Ralph is kind of like Nick Fury. Yeah. Kind of. Well, no, Ralph was never involved in there. Oh no, Penelope. Penelope, yeah. Because yeah, right. she's a princess. Or is it Vanellope? Vanellope. Yeah, it's Vanellope. So are we counting that Star Wars princess are going to be in this? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think Leia so. wasn't in the. Yeah, scene. well, she wasn't in that princess room. But I maybe. think this is like original. Princesses. Classic, classic, classic princesses. Is, no, Disney. no, Pixar, Pixar princess is there too. Oh, uh, brave was it? You're yeah. right. Yeah, brave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's, let's ask the, the the female panelists today. Would you guys really want to watch a Disney princess movie where they're all sort of in an ensemble movie and it's in the Wreck It Ralph universe? I wouldn't watch it as a movie. I might watch it as a mini series. Yeah, yeah, mini series oh, okay. or like a short, like movie. a like a web series, maybe, but not like a full feature movie. film. Yeah, because <laughs> we sort of had that in Strike the Third. Strike or oh, the Third Strike? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But oh, there was a big mashup. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Of all the fairy tale characters yes, and. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I think they'll have a problem of trying to figure out who's going to be the lead. Yeah, that, the that's true. I, I don't that's think the main plot of Bambi the- should be the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the princess. <laughs> Mother gets shot. Oh man! Recruits the princesses. <laughs> fights the poachers. Oh man! Disney, I'm available for the next two years <laughs> if you're interested. I think it's something that that would 
kind of work. But uh, yeah, you're right. I'm not sure if, if it would work as a full movie, like yeah. a full 90 minute runtime thing. Because what's the story gonna be? It's, it's gonna one be one of the princesses gets kidnapped. I'm like, oh, okay, girl power. I think if they do make it into a movie, the amount of money this movie is gonna make is gonna be ridiculous. Yeah. Like oh, they're yeah. gonna have to come up with a new number to quantify it. <laughs> I mean, I will still watch it. Yeah. But you're not like gagging, like, please give me this yeah, movie. Yeah, I wouldn't want it that way because yeah. I know a lot of things would be ruined. Yeah. Okay. Nice. It'll definitely be a musical. Oh, that's for sure. Musical. Yeah. Girl fight scene. So like a maybe girl... like all the princes disappeared or something. And then Sabtu Mulan. <laughs> and then Beca- because because a that's mad that. titan snapped that's his, his finger. glove. <laughs> and all the princesses disappeared. So only yes. half the princesses disappeared. Disney's yeah. version like, of the movie the Widows. The men are gone. Oh dear. <laughs> so they have to find the men. Infinity love. <laughs> okay, before we... Now they have to rescue the men. <laughs> before, we yeah. go, before we go further down this rabbit hole, I'm going to stop this and bring out the next bit of news, which is that Sean Gunn was in the news and he says that if you're concerned about how Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is going to turn out because of what happened they got rid of James Gunn they threw out his script Bautista threatened to leave the movie altogether pleading with Disney to let him go and release him from his contract Sean Gunn who plays Kragler in uh, the movies has said like look guys don't worry it's going to work itself out like the movie's in good hands you don't have to worry about this I don't think anyone's worried I mean, no one's really Ke- Kevin Feige is there. Mm. Unless Kevin Feige is not there, then probably we'd be worried. Yeah. I think uh, I think there's a culture of entitlement with these movies. <laughs> People <laughs> yeah. feel like they're owed Guardians of the Galaxy 3. It's like, like a part you know, of them, th- right? This is the same world we live in where Nicolas Cage had a Superman costume built for him and they were given a $60 million budget, half of which was burned and the movie was never made. Like, this is still the same industry. So, like, for us to even get Guardians of the Galaxy 3 would be a blessing. <laughs> Okay, I'm excited to see where Guardians of the Galaxy goes in the third installment because traditionally what we know from the MCU is that, you know, they, they get like three. Although arguably, you know, you have Iron Man 3, which is like, you know, depending on who you ask, either it's okay or not that great. It's good. Uh, <laughs> no, Iron Man 3 was wrong. But the Captain America films have been really great. Like the third one, especially Civil War, yes. that was that was really good. But yeah, we, we haven't had three movies from any other ensemble or character in the MCU except for Thor. And that was like a totally different direction that they took for Thor Ragnarok. So I'm just curious to see where this would go. I mean, post Endgame, yeah. I think they will stay in space. <laughs> yeah. hmm. I think hmm. Hmm. are you sure <laughs> more more cosmic stuff more cosmic yeah because that's where they are pointing to yeah. for phase 4 of the I MCU know. maybe they'll meet fate what's the other magician magician wizard huh? Doctor Strange no the the, the golden <laughs> when they, oh, oh. Andy Warlock, Warlock. Warlock. Yeah. Yes. Adam, Warlock. Adam, Warlock. Adam Warlock Adam Warlock they're, 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 they're never he's not a magician <laughs> what yeah, okay. he's not a magician <laughs> how dare you yeah. uh, well we know a magician and he no that's <laughs> yeah that's not true <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maybe but, he'll play Adam Warlock. But, hey guys, what's up? It's Adam Warlock here. <laughs> <laughs> what's my name? <laughs> Just like we practiced. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think they'll bring Adam Warlock. Because uh, the end credit scene said something Adam, about right? Adam. Yeah, I heard. But uh, I, no, I, isn't it James Gunn's plan to bring in Adam Warlock I, in the I, third one? Here's the thing: you can't bring Adam Warlock without there having serious repercussions with the story of the Infinity Saga. Right, like he's he's so twa- intertwined. His fate is intertwined with Thanos, and then you can't bring him like four movies and go. By the way, this guy's super important. So I mm. think if he does come in, it'll be like a Howard the Duck situation where he's just like one of those guys. Hey guys, I disagree. Yeah. So really, they trick. they wouldn't adapt completely from the from I, the comics. I think I think they wanted Adam Warlock to be like Thanos, so it's like every movie then they have a little bit of Thanos, so they have a little bit yeah. of Adam oh, Warlock until right. like the him. the end of like Phase Five, and then that's where he comes in yeah. or something. Yeah. Could so by be. Phase Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see a, a we'll whole movie finally, of yeah we'll Adam finally Warlock. get to see Adam Warlock <laughs> and we'll be like oh finally <laughs> that could be it something that we are sort of you know saying when is it gonna come especially Dell because he was very looking forward to this it's the movie called New Mutants which is supposed to be showing last, last year. year last year when is it gonna come it's yeah? supposed to be on Blu-ray by now <laughs> it's supposed to be on Blu-ray <laughs> by now they did announce that they were gonna do some reshoots for the movie again um, but they haven't happened yet oh, oh I, I, I like because it's like more horror yeah I'm about to blow everyone's minds. This movie's never coming out. Ooh. Oh. It's not It's not coming out. You just know. Because somebody asked Maisie Williams or Anya Taylor-Joy, one of them, at a red carpet event, like, hey, what's happening with New Mutants? And they just, like, went blank. They don't know. They wouldn't know. No, like, they. I think they know. They just don't know what to say at that point. And if they know, they, the studio already told them what's going to happen, their publicists would have prepped them to say, like, how they're going to answer reporters. Mm. They would have been prepped. You think so? Yeah, we yeah. watch mm. too much Entourage to know this Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's coming out. 
Like it's not on this year's ca- calendar, right? No, it's not. No, it it's... can't be on this year's calendar. They'll just put it in Disney Plus <laughs> <laughs> or Hulu. Or Hulu. Yeah, or no, H- I don't oh. think it's coming out. It's not coming out. Nah, I don't no, no so. hope. I think they they're waiting for Dark Phoenix and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna go well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it will come. It will come. I have faith. I think it will be well. Because New faith. Mutants has have already been shot. Like the whole movie has been shot. It's yeah. done. Yeah. It's just that people are not satisfied with it, so they just release it on uh, TV or something. Like a TV movie, like Netflix. Yeah. Yes. On yeah. VHS or something. No. VHS. VHS. Yeah. VCD, this one and this two. <laughs> Laser disc. Laser disc. Anyway, uh, let's move things along. And one of my favorite movies from Tom Cruise is a movie called Edge of Tomorrow, where he stars alongside Emily Blunt. It's a very, you know, futuristic alien type Groundhog Day situation where he keeps waking up and it's the same day and he has a chance to uh, end the war. Like, I guess single handedly, I guess. The kids today call it Happy Death Day. <laughs> to you. <laughs> anyway, a sequel is in the works and it's being developed. Um, wow! But why? Because Someone asked. Another <laughs> alien invasion? Yeah. No. I thought. I thought some, asked. some executive was like, "All right, this movie made a lot of money. Let's make another one." Also, that hedgehog movie make it look realistic. <laughs> This, this movie went under the radar of a lot of people. Yeah, it did. It was yeah. overshadowed by, I can't remember what movie. It was because Tom Cruise had two movies come out that year. He uh, had Rogue Nation as well, I think. I no, it was called Oblivion. No, it was definitely not Oblivion. <laughs> no? No, Oblivion was 2013. I don't know, I can't remember. But it's, it's the same year that Rogue, Rogue Nation, the Mission Impossible 5? Was yeah. it mm-hmm. the same year as The Mummy? No, 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 it was not. No, 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 that was after. (laughs) Speaking of The Mummy, that leads us to Universal. Thank you for that, Tibby. Uh, They are sort of... (laughs) What? (laughs) No problem. (laughs) They they still want to get the Dark Universe off the ground. Yes. Okay, and it is said that Universal is going to start filming the Invisible Man reboot movie really soon, although they have not casted anyone as the lead. Yeah, because he's invisible. (laughs) (laughs) They don't don't need... Yeah. (laughs) You think they were going to cast someone? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> They'll just need someone to voice him. Yeah. They just need like something to stand there for light movement. That's it. Or some random guy. With <laughs> There's some guy up the street. Hey, you want 10 bucks? Here you go. Roll of a lifetime. <laughs> oh my gosh. Call Invisible Man. Originally, it was supposed to be Johnny Depp who would be playing the lead yes. in Invisible Man. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't <laughs> Given his current situation, I, I think he could still play it because he doesn't have to be around. Um, I think the, the thing with this is that when you're playing the Invisible Man, a lot of it has to do with mannerisms. Like, yeah. things will suddenly fall off. So you need somebody to still act and then you digitally wipe them out, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I thought Johnny Depp was perfect. I, I thought know. Johnny Depp was perfect. For right. Yeah. Just yeah. Thinking. He's got that 1940s look going on yeah. with the two-sided mustache. Mm. I'm just thinking him as uh, Jack Sparrow in Invisible. Oh, I've got... Because <laughs> he's so clumsy and keep <laughs> yeah. knocking things yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. He's oh no. All in my tape. <laughs> he's like stumbling Sorry. around. He's stumbling around like, yeah. why am I gone? <laughs> <laughs> why am I gone? <laughs> why am I gone? Where are my fingers? <laughs> Here's something I don't know if I want. It's uh, something from the late 80s and early 90s. It's Conan. And Arnold Schwarzenegger says Again? that he still wants to make a King Conan movie. Oh, that would be perfect. Really? Yes. Conan is the most quotable movie in history. <laughs> there was a Conan movie recently, right? No, no. That never happened, Tips. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the actor? Nobody. No. no. Um, Jason Momoa. Jason. No, no, guys. <laughs> if he, you don't he, say it, he, it's he, not true. He dated a future, yes. he dated oh, future yes. past that timeline. Yeah, yeah. Guys, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he got Aquaman <laughs> let's give him that <laughs> now Conan is one of the most quotable movies of all time I can't say those quotes on air but I'm telling you those quotes are amazing I would love to see it because the original Conan opens with Arnold Schwarzenegger in prosthetics and a fake wig and he looks like he's old mm-hmm. so I think it's perfect if he plays an old Conan role because that way they can tie up to the previous one to the first two how old is he now anyway he is he's in his 70. 70? He's about 70, yeah. Oh, year away. But it looks great. Let's Wait, he's 70? I'm going uh, to get ripped. I think so. Arnold's at least 67. Oh, wow. Because Stallone see. is like 70. Stallone is 70. God. Arnold yeah. is... Fact checker TB. How Wait, old is he? How old is he? 71. Ah, 70. What? He's in yeah. his 70s. Yeah. Okay. 
He's 71. Arnold's 71. And he's still buff. Yeah, I'm 28. <laughs> what? My mini? Whoa. Yeah, he's <laughs> older than my dad. All right, so you guys would definitely watch a King Conan movie. Absolutely. Would you watch this, though? All right, let me let me set the stage for you. There were two movies that came out from a studio called Disney where it was kind of like their modernish kind of take of like an Indiana Jones thing and they wanted this character or this group of people to find treasures which were hidden in national sites in the U.S. Oh. And it's called National Treasure <laughs> yeah. 1 and 2. Would you want to watch no. a National Treasure 3? I do. Absolutely. I love those uh, movies. Nicolas Cage is Cage. brilliant. Yeah. Um, not in those movies. <laughs> Is we gotta steal the declaration they, they of independence. They want it because they did not kill Sean B in the first one. I have no So idea. they have to kill him. Because <laughs> Disney... In the uh, second one? Yeah. He didn't die. He just got arrested. Yeah, he got arrested. Oh, nice. Disney yeah. is uh, apparently still considering a National Treasure 3. Oh, no. That would be amazing. I like it. I say go uh, for it. Make it a I'll say do it and kill Sean Bean. Oh. <laughs> That's the only record he has on IMDb alive. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like a black spot. I don't know if I want to... Sec- to me, the second one was bad. I never watched the second one. Yeah, the second what? one was I didn't finish it. Good compared to the first one. The first one was sort of like, a, oh, look, it's the Resolute Desk and uh, we're well, going down to Wall Street and there's, apparently there's like tunnels on there. What's Give me this recent movie. Nicolas Cage? Yeah. Mandy. Ghost Rider 2. No, Mandy. Mandy. Dear God. Mandy. <laughs> Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Ghost Rider 2. <laughs> that was where I was done. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely watch National Treasure. No, yeah. no. They could remake Captain Corelli's Mandolin and I'll watch it again. Mm. <laughs> watch it. I love Nicolas Cage. <laughs> All right. To close off the news section this week on the podcast, I have to ask you again, would you watch this film? Apparently, there is a Hello Kitty English language film in the works. No. no. And it's being brought to us no. by New Line Cinema. No. Look, Hello Kitty, no. I'm, not, I'm not defending <laughs> no. her, okay? Because apparently it's a her, and she's apparently British, all right? This this Hello yes. Kitty cat. And her yes. name is Kitty White. Kitty White, yeah. Yeah. And so, she's not a cat. And she's not. And a she's cat. not a cat. Apparently, what is she? I don't she's know. A British lady. She's a British Kitty lady White. named Kitty White. Yeah, this is true. This is like yes. the lore of Hello Kitty. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> why is there a lore for this? Why is there a lore for this? She's I'm actually Adele. not Japanese. Yeah, no, she's, she, British. she's British. That, that's true. She's not a cat. She's a okay, British okay, lady guys, named guys, Kitty guys, White. Guys, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, guys. Can I? Can I? So there's a brand called Hello Kitty. Yeah. Yep. With a feline-looking prota- protagonist yep. that has whiskers mm-hmm. and paws yeah. and two ears that stick out. You want me to keep going? And yeah, like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and she's not a cat. Yep. Her first name is Kitty. <laughs> and her and her. Sorry, what was her name? Kitty White. Kitty yeah, White. Kitty White. She's not a cat. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay, so. You all see it. <laughs> we but, see it, yeah but, yeah, yeah. but tell that to the creator, yeah. uh, the guy who started San Do you know the guy? Because I'm going to call this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's adamant. And the lady who gave her her current look, who's still alive, the, the original artist yeah. for Hello yeah. Kitty, she says, no, she's she's a, you know, she's like a hip and trendy British lady. non-cat. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, sh- I, 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 I heard he was a, a, it was a boy. I uh, didn't, I, I there's heard. a ribbon in the... Design. Yeah, but <laughs> men can all wear it. Uh, uh, yeah, but TB is it's an exemption to the rule. <laughs> TB has a thousand fifty followers on Instagram. What does Hello Kitty have? All right, would you watch Probably this? Million. Would you would you watch this movie? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I've seen. <laughs> Ryan no. voicing it. I seen one of the series episode before, and it was so bad. That was a cartoon, right? Yeah. 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 There was also a Hello Kitty signature shop in Brunei. Hey, fun fun for... fact: I'm renting that unit now. Oh yeah. yes, yes, it was in Gadong or no? It was, no, it was in Tamsui. Complex, yeah. Where his oh, shop oh, yes, is right now. Yes, yes. I'm okay. That exactly yeah. So there we go. Hollywood, if you're listening, we do not need a Hello Kitty live action. But movie. we wouldn't we mind. Would the, we I, wouldn't I mind like, another I, national treasure. I like their merchandise, so I like Hello Kitty merchandise. Oh, you would have loved Japan. <laughs> it's love everywhere. Japan. <laughs> it's Japan. everywhere. All right. So that's the news this week on the Wine Crew Podcast. Tell us what you think of the news, or if you have a bit of news that you want to share, check us out on our contact links down below. Which leads us to our next bit of the show, which is a big movie that we're reviewing this week it's called Captain Marvel and it is the debut of Brie Larson in the MCU as Carol Danvers let's get like, like a quick synopsis yes. from Kai no <laughs> no uh, I think I fear I have lost my objectivity so uh, I, uh, I'm not the right person alright I will give a very very quick synopsis of this movie now Captain Marvel of course played by Brie Larson she is the latest uh, superhero to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe she was teased in Avengers Infinity War at the end of the movie when Nick Fury had a pager and uh, he disintegrated away after Thanos' snap 
And uh, in this movie, we get like her backstory, and uh, it's essentially an origin story. Although it's, it's running off like you know a couple of different timelines, like you know it, it was like a six year six years earlier, and then you know it's now 1995, and you know we sort of first see her at our current time, which is 2018, 2019. I, I don't have a lot to say without spoiling the movie. It's just that I did not know very much about Captain Marvel before this movie came out. And uh, this was sort of teased as like the next biggest thing to push the MCU into phase four. It's not. It's <laughs> <laughs> I, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. All right, let, let's go around the room and let's start off with Kai because he's, he's held off uh, on this movie and he has a look of disappointment on his face. What did you think of Captain Marvel? I think I should let everybody else go first. No, no, no. Uh, okay, so the thing the thing about Captain Marvel is that it's funny that she has her movie the year Shazam is coming out because for the longest time, Shazam was called Captain Marvel. And then Marvel was smart mm. with their legal moves and then they were like, you know, we just let's just trademark that name. And Shazam had to be renamed Shazam. So for a lot of DC fans, this movie is already at a handicap because, oh yeah, thanks for taking away our name. But for a lot of other people, this is supposed to kind of whet their appetite before Avengers Endgame. For a lot of other people, this is supposed to be, she's supposed to be the next feminist icon. Like this movie has had itself in a very tough position from the get-go. And I walked into this movie with zero expectations. Just because I know whatever I expect, it won't be able to deliver. Just because it's just trying to work on so many levels. And the trailers gave away small bits and pieces. Like the fact that she wasn't on Earth for a long time. And then she's trying to figure out who she is. And I honestly honestly thought that would be the angle of the story and it was like it's her trying to figure out who she is but it's just not a strong angle to make a superhero film out of like i felt that the more interesting angle was the crawl and scre- uh, scroll 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 yeah. and Cree war sorry yeah. and you know before this movie came out there were pictures of ronan the accuser as a young as a younger yeah character there was pictures of Jamon hanso's character so you thought okay maybe this could somehow lead into or leave them at a place where when you watch Guardians of the Galaxy again, you go, oh, that's how they got here, right? Because they 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 start off in a different trajectory. I didn't feel that that war was as important as the story made it out to be because I didn't see the immediate threat. Like they went to one planet and then they were like, oh no, it's Skrulls. Uh. And then like, that's it, right? We didn't see the threats of the Skrulls anymore. Mm. And then, she, you know, they start prying into her brain and it just rapidly evolves into something about her trying to figure out who she is, which in a movie where, you know, there's an alien war happening, I think I would really rather watch the alien war. Yeah, so what you're saying is like the war took like a backseat very yeah. quickly. And, and yeah. then um, there's so much this movie did by the time it was ending, which changed the way the MCU happened that I wasn't a huge fan of. Like there was a lot of, like we're keeping it spoiler free, I'm guessing. Uh, well, I, I think, you know, if you want to mention it, uh, we, we can put like a spoiler warning I think I think somebody's Spoiler gonna, alert. Yeah, I think somebody's <laughs> gonna bring it up. Yeah. But yeah, like so at the end of the movie I realized that they tried to make too many people happy to the point where I don't think anybody walked out super happy. So I didn't really enjoy that. Okay. Uh <laughs> Del. Uh, uh call me a sexist too. Well, because I don't like this movie at all. Um it's it doesn't feel like an MCU phase three movie. It's like the writing yeah. is so I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just lazy writing to me, or is just that these two directors, writer directed, they are not capable enough to deliver this movie in the MCU world. Um, the part where Captain Marvel or Carol Danvers is trying to find herself, like discover who she was before Captain Marvel or Veers, it's it's also taken a backseat to whatever else that is happening. Like, there's the Skrull and Kree War versus the searching for identity part. They are both taking a back seat and nothing is put in the forefront. So you can't really get behind any one story. And the writing is just not... It's just bad. It's just bad. Plot because holes. Plot holes. It, yeah. yeah. Plot holes, you, you yes. had a, Yeah, you had a lot of problems uh, with like continuity and, you know, why yeah, did she make these choices? You can ask a lot of why in this movie like you can ask why why didn't they do this or why didn't they do that especially when you know they flew to Peg- Pegasus because it was cloaked they couldn't find it but then uh, they uncloaked it they went in they knew yeah, the they were, bad yeah. guys were right behind them so why not cloak it up again like mm. why their original didn't... ship wouldn't be cloaked <laughs> I think they were out of cloaking juice. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah. we got one cloaking juice. Let's put it at the right place in like, the story. Like I said, like low bed already, so they cannot like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tesseract. So it's a very don't know lazy writing. Tesseract. Yeah, lazy writing. Okay, Nikkei. So what did you think of this movie? I, I didn't enjoy it. You didn't enjoy I it. I didn't okay. enjoy it. Um, because normally 
after watching a Marvel MCU movie, especially after Phase 1, you always have this like lingering feeling post-watching. This like, like I never watch it. I, mm. Nothing at all. Um, Brie Larson, an incredible actress, was given a not good script and not good directing. So she couldn't shine and be like truly but she, because like when she started finding her best friend and you see the interaction that was really good like I mm. felt the the friendship thing mm. between them but everything else was like I, I don't I don't like I after watching I, I was trying to think back and I was like even watching Ant-Man and the Wasp like after watching that I love Hope Pink so much and she is not the main character yep. they did not bring that out of Captain Marvel and Brie Larson to make you love that character or believe in that character and want to see more like I don't really care if I do see her in the next MCU movie but I do want to see what's more in yeah. the MCU movie because like the way they deliver her character in this just didn't do it didn't do it yeah okay just... so it was as if like she was there but you, things were happening on screen you were not interested you, like, they, they, they were, couldn't yeah. I couldn't relate or couldn't get the character yeah I, could, I couldn't understand or the way they developed her as how she became the superhero she is like the suit changing color thing was it's so ridiculous <laughs> yeah. how did the kid know what buttons to press exactly. on a pad that had no buttons and it's an alien device maybe yeah. the, the, the device followed her brain <laughs> just, I don't, I don't. just keep touching it it'll just follow <laughs> whatever you're thinking alright TV what, what did you think of this movie uh if you want to kickstart the next generation of MCU movies, I don't think this is the one. Because like when you watch Iron Man last time, it's like, oh, I want to watch more of this stuff. This is like, all right, um, I don't want it to have a sequel. This is no requirement. I don't need to know what happened next. So it was kind of boring at one point it was like, just blab yeah, yeah like f- un- until viewers found out found who her best friend was everything before that was i i, I thought was a bit boring <laughs> it was a bit boring yeah and then oh, wait, on a scale of one to ten how boring oh. <laughs> ten ten being really boring i don't know like i don't usually check my phone while i was watching movies so i checked my phone so i don't know in which scale was <laughs> that's that. like a ten maybe yeah i think without samuel l jackson in this movie it would have been even worse yeah Mm. I, I Ben Mendelsohn was really yeah. good. Yeah. Until he put on the scroll makeup. I thought that was amazing. That was I, I, pretty good. I okay. also got disappointed with the cat because they built hype with goose and then just turns out tentacles goes out of his like, mouth and then that's like it. Like as a flirt. Can... Like, can you not give him a better like role in this movie? Like, yeah. is there, is there a pivotal role like of the cat? Good? Like when when they when they wanted to reach Pegasus, I was like, okay, this is where the cat going to like turn into, into an, an alien. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I was like thinking that would happen but nope it's just a tentacle <laughs> tentacle thing flirkin yeah it's like that thing that um, Han Solo kept in his ship in Force oh, Awakens oh yeah the one that oh, they yeah, were that transporting the Rathar. The Rathar. Yeah, he had three going to King Prana yeah they, they were transporting them anyway finally we have Naz what did you think of Captain Marvel okay as an origin movie it's alright I get why they only tried, <laughs> emphasis on try, to focus on the self-discovery part just for her and kind of stray away from the Skrull and Kree war because they just want to focus on learning who she truly is. You know, it's a bit symbolic. It's for girls around the world to learn who they are, their past, apa. Okay. And um, I think that's why a lot of girls like it as well because like as we grow, we tend to forget our origins and stuff like that. So it's something to relate with Anula, girls discovering themselves. So I think that's why a lot of girls who watch it find it quite empowering to see her like just grow within the few days we see her in the movie. I think it's like two days. <laughs> yeah, two days. Yeah. Which is why I kind of find it realistic that they don't really touch on the scroll Cree part because it's only like a few days and she's on Earth and she has to learn who she is from her friend who doesn't even explain much about her past anyway Mm. so i get that part but what i don't like because i read the captain marvel comics and i i'm a huge fan of carol Carol danvers is how she is not the carol danvers that we know from the comics like she's quite stern as well and this carol danvers she's like reckless and and rebellious and she's very snarky snarky yeah snarky like like right from the beginning she's like like a flirk yeah (laughs) she's talking Uh, back she's yeah. yeah i don't bring my identification and put it on the badge stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I don't find her the current Danvers that I know. And then the actual Captain Marvel, Marvel, I didn't like 
her mm. character as well. Like, why is it a her? <laughs> yeah, she's she's played by Annette like, Bening in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> that was Annette Bening. What? Yes. Oh, yeah. The whole time you don't know. Whoa! That, that was Annette Bening. Okay, yep. Yeah. Changed the way Who I see this? the film. I didn't like the real, like, Captain Marvel, you know? like, And they, they didn't even explain how she became Captain Marvel. Because Carol Danvers starts as Miss Marvel first. Mm. And then eventually becomes Captain Marvel. Very passionate. Yeah. For those listeners, she's waving. She's her waving arm. her hands <laughs> <her, laughs> around yeah. frantically, like, like no, yeah. this is not supposed. To be. Yeah. It's, okay. So in this cinematic universe, maybe this is how her origin story is, but it's just not Captain Marvel to me. Okay. So, so. for for the hardcore comic book fans, they're not gonna like this origin story of Captain Marvel yeah. because it it strays yeah. away from the source material, which is the yeah. comic books. Okay. But but you did say that girls in general will yeah. find this movie empowering, yeah, empowering because it's it's a it has to do a lot with self-discovery yeah. and finding out how strong you are within yeah. and things like that. Okay, my take on this movie is that like Kai, I walked in with zero expectations. Like I stayed away from a lot of the promo material that was coming out in the last month. There were a lot of featurettes and there were a lot of interviews with the cast and certain key members of the movie, which I refused to watch. I'm like, I'm not watching this. Yeah. I want to go into this movie blank. And I have to say that I think among all of us in this room here today on this episode of the podcast, I was like okay with this movie. Like I yeah. had, I had totally zero expectations and I walked in and there was some action beats there was it, yeah. it was a buddy cop movie at one point between yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick, Fury Nick Fury and, and, and Carol Danvers there were some very nice tributes to Stan Lee yes. and, and very relevant yeah. to the time period that this movie is set in which is the yeah. mid 90s yeah. it, it is a typical Marvel movie where it, it is kind of like they try to inject humor in certain situations and you know they've become very good at that but I think Nikkei was also right in saying that even though she is a great actress which she is I, I think it's it's the writing that sort of let her down like let the yes, character that she's yeah. putting up on screen down because we sort of don't know a lot about her even though we go through this whole self-discovery thing she she, she still seems very one-dimensional as a character I think the problem is that the extent of her powers even the film doesn't know what the extent of yeah. her powers is yeah like, for, for, for this movie do at least so many yeah. things and all we see her do is become Superman yeah <laughs> essentially <laughs> I think the problem is that by the time the story figures out what happened to her which is this is spoiler yeah, yeah. Spoiler. Let, 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 let's spoiler go full story right? yeah for spoiler full um, is that she contains the power of the Tesseract which a lot of people know is the Space, space Stone, Stone yeah. Yeah. right? by the time the movie reveals it it's no longer interesting yeah. because at this point she's already kind of let the, the story's kind of slipped by us already with Iron Man the arc reactor came in 35 minutes into the film with Captain America the first Avenger at about that mark Steve Rogers became, becomes Steve yeah. Rogers that we know and see Thor started off as the, the God of Thunder lost that power had to earn it back so there was already an inkling of what we know these characters can do and it's a matter of were they worthy of that power like at the end of Iron Man could he have overcome all this and beat Obadiah Stane because there was a whole thing about uh, this is proof that Tony Stark has a heart that other arc reactor so there's a lot of a uh, lot of things going on but with this one I think the problem with this one is that by the time we realize the true extent of her powers those powers don't seem interesting anymore like when she's talking to the great intelligence and she's bound down by cables yeah. and then there's Nirvana playing in the back mm, yeah. and she breaks free of the it's no longer like oh wow like it's no longer amazing like yeah. I just felt that way but at, at the same time that's not even like my biggest problem my biggest problem is that Nick Fury is on his computer he's writing a document called the protector initiative <laughs> And then I was there. And I, I saw it. I saw this and I go and I swore in the cinema really loudly because I knew exactly where it was going. And then he looks at a picture of Carol Denvers and her middle her call sign was Avenger. The plane. The yeah, yeah. Call yeah. Her call, call sign, sign on, call the, sign, yeah. on the bomber was Avenger. And he goes, Oh, and then the Avengers theme plays. Yeah. And my biggest problem was you expect me to believe this is the storyline that kicked the Avengers into action. Because it just didn't seem like I could buy it. It wasn't plausible. And yeah. it made Captain America, the first Avenger, cheap. Because there was always this idea when the first Avengers movie got together. Like, it felt like Cap had sacrificed himself. And this whole idea of superheroes being there is because Cap was the first superhero. Right? And yeah. then this movie takes away from that. Like, it goes, oh, the blonde guy that died in the ice? Nah, he's not important anymore. And he's called the first Avenger. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I really hated the fact that they just played the Avengers theme as he's looking at his computer. Yeah, they, they just retconned the whole thing. Yeah, like, so oh. I thought that was... I, I did not like that part. And I yeah. and I absolutely... Th like, I was neutral with the cat. I hate the, the part I was neutral with the cat. <laughs> scratched the eye. Until oh. he scratched Fury's eye. Oh, yeah. And this is why he's got no. an eye patch. 
Yeah, because in the in Winter Soldier, he Winter goes. Soldier, the yeah. last time I trusted somebody, I lost an eye. Yeah, exactly. And, and but he lies. A lot. I guess it's lies something. A lot. Well, I I, I, something. I don't have a problem with that because it shows that Nick Fury is still human and he yeah. had a flaw and he, he just lies and constantly about his eye. There was a potential <laughs> for him to have this epic fight. Yes. No, but and then he lost was, an eye. I know Marvel went with the other way, which is which was to make it into a joke. Uh, it's okay but you see what Kevin and uh, Kai you know you two talked about the problems it was in the writing and when the Russo brothers put Robert Redford into Winter Soldier he was one of the best part he was he's a great actor yeah, that, right? that twist was whoa yep. and Amazing. when these two directors put the great Annette Bening into this movie Kai doesn't even know who she is <laughs> That is my fault. That is not on the director. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah. Uh, no, th- she didn't have an impact. Yeah, yeah. she did not. Especially she as Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the actual Captain Marvel. I, I thought it would like, be Jude Law, but yeah. turns out he's yeah. done wrong. Yeah. I thought yeah. Jude Law would have been a good Marvel. Yeah, yeah. But then no, for, for the record, like I also felt like this was them doing a Green Lantern movie better than the guys who own Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole Air Force base and the yeah. green suits. I'm just like, yeah, you all taking a dig at Green Lantern. I get it. And Carol was supposed to have like Marvel's blood. Uh, yeah, but, they, well, it, but then the, it's a uh, it's is an adaptation. Like uh, yeah. a lot of the MCU, they yeah. they've taken away mm. from the comic book. I which, think. If done correctly, mm. or if done uh, yeah. to a satisfactory level, you know, we'll be okay with it. Okay, Civil War the movie is so far away from Civil War the comic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it still works. Yeah. Like that name still sticks. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. In, in, it's uh, just, I think the problem with this, it goes back to Marvel or the studio or the director, whoever it was, yeah. trying to satisfy too many people at once. Mm. Yeah. To yeah. the point where they... Because you see, it has all these little bits, right? Like, there's a bit where... Oh, uh, here's such a nice look at Coulson when he was younger. Here's all these 90s references you don't need. Yeah. Here's like all this empowerment stuff. Here's all this thing about never believing the losing side of the war. Like there's all these commentaries, but the problem is it's small commentaries. It's not part of a larger narrative. It didn't feel like yeah. it was mm-hmm. part of one I thing. think maybe because Wonder Woman came out and it was a big success and yeah. a lot of people love it and they try to not make it seem like they copy Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah. They could yeah. be a, mm. a problem that the writers had yeah yeah i I imagine the pressure of follow so after watching this movie i went on youtube and i typed in wonder woman best scenes because i've only seen that movie once yeah and i i remember thinking the no man's land scene was quite nice that was awesome Uh yeah that was well choreographed yeah and i remember thinking like yeah that was not a bad scene and then i go to youtube and i type it in and i thought like it's hard to have that kind of an impact with a female superhero film. Yeah. So I imagine like the writers going in, they were super careful with what they did mm. to the point where they may have unintentionally, yeah. you know, ruined it. The but writers, the sorry, no, I just imagined the writers' tables. Like you know what would be funny? The cat scratching. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it. Maybe it's like an Andrew again. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I think it would be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> the cat scratches her. From, from Aquaman. And that's how he got it. Yeah. That's how he got the yeah. patch. Yeah. Do you guys have like a cat like who can like totally like scratch? Yeah. Um, but the thing is. Alien cop flirting. I, I, the, so I'm about to compare how disappointed I was with that scene of him yeah. getting his eyes scratched by a cat. The only thing that has disappointed me more in the last three or four years is when Luke Skywalker threw his saber over the cliff. <laughs> No, like, it's so disappointing. <laughs> like, that yeah. scene when when Luke threw his saber killed me. Like, I died. I'm not come alive. two years for that. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm still in the, I'm still in the grave. But <laughs> watching this, I felt like an inkling of that. I was like, what? Like, this cat just... How, when did you get pet cemeteried? <laughs> the day after. <laughs> uh, and also, the last thing I want to add is... Um, a lot of the marketing for this movie was saying, like, there's a new captain in town. It's time for a new captain or something no. like that. But when that first mid credit scene happened, I was so glad to see the original <laughs> captain. <Yeah. laughs> like just The best see, part of the movie. Yeah, the best part of the movie... It was the post credits Is Chris Evans in a white shirt... <laughs> Going, I want to know who's on the other side. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> me too, Steve. That is actually the best part of seeing Captain Marvel. Like, yeah. at that moment, you're like, oh, wow, Captain what Marvel. A... Like, throughout yeah. the whole way you're watching Captain Marvel, you don't yeah. go like, oh, because wow, I, Captain Marvel. I think it's one of those stories that works best told from somebody else's perspective. Yeah. Maybe. Like, in, in the promo, they had so much of her in the helmet and the mohawk. Yeah. It yeah. was they, so cool. They yeah. cut that out. Yeah. Well, it's not in the movie. Was, there it was. was. There was. There was. No, no, no. There was one in the trailer that wasn't in the movie. Yeah, there was a few shots. Yeah, there were a few in the trailer that looked really amazing. Amazing, but okay. it wasn't a movie. Yeah. They've never explained that helmet thing. 
Why did the helmet come come into play? Yeah, okay. Oxygen won't go in, right? It's like, no, it, it's it's a deep space. It's a deep space helmet, oh, right? Please, please, please! It's like a piece of uh, cloth that didn't even cover her nose. Uh, d- dude, there was there no. was the no, no there was it no. was the Batman thing where the her mouth part is revealed. No, 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 but then, but then, no, no, there, her, she has a cover when she's in space and she's yeah, underwater. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, there's a cover. It's it's the same blue mesh thing that is in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That covers the mouth. Really? Okay, yeah. I, I gotta watch yeah. it. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she. That's why when they were underwater. She came out and then there was that thing covering. Yeah, it was... I saw that one from underwater, yeah, not in space in, though. In space as in well. Spaces, yeah. In space, it's That's like... why I was wondering. Only, why... only until she goes like full force with her powers, then she, I think she realizes she doesn't need it. She doesn't need it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's when I didn't see it. Mm. Yeah. 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 But... Uh, earlier on in the space scenes, yeah, yeah. she still had the yeah. blue the... mask she thing. She was nerfed. What I liked <laughs> about this movie was all the '90s references. Yeah, I'm plus... with you on that. Yeah. Plus the fact that they put the Skrull and the Kree, like aliens coming into Earth in the 90s, which is very fitting because that's yeah, when, but, like, like, you know, Roswell was in the 90s. Yeah. Um, Roswell X-Files. X-Files was yeah. in the X-Files. 90s. Oh, Ros- oh, yeah, okay, okay. Roswell was in the 90s? Yeah. 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 Was late 90s. The, the show, yeah. Oh, the show. The I was show like, wait a minute. Roswell was in the 1940s. We watched these, there are a lot of alien subjects back in the 90s. Yeah, that's true. I don't know that one. No, that one's good. Okay, let's go through the actors in this movie. Brie Larson, I think, did very, very well. Yeah. Annette Bening, she was underutilized, definitely. Yeah. I didn't know that was her. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Clark Gregg, Phil Coulson, and Samuel L. Jackson. Not, not, like enough. Not, not enough. Not enough. Not enough. And I want to say this, you know, for the record, like Marvel has this de aging tech oh, down. It's really scary. good. Yeah. You know when the digital artists have really done their job well when you don't even notice after you first see it. I stopped like looking for the flaws. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's that's uh, Samuel oh, L. Jackson. He's, a, he's such a beautiful man. <laughs> It's not like the mustache situation. It's not the mustache situation. Let's talk about the tribute to Stan Lee. We see him make his cameo on a subway car, I guess, which is not subway. It's above ground. It's a train. 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 It's like an MRT or something. Oh, yeah. 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 It's the The, above ground train, train which is, you know, actually also subway because it goes up and down. Yeah. He's on it and he's, uh, he's, a there's a, f- no, he's not reading newspaper. There's a That's fight right. happening. Carol Danvers is fighting with a Skrull and he makes his uh, appearance and he's reading a script uh-huh. and he's saying a line over and the script yeah. is from Mallrats. And to those who know. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- there was, he was that holding. That was his first, uh, no, that was his second cameo in, in his uh, Yeah, on-screen appearance. Yeah. Kevin and, Smith's Mallrats. And that's from the View Askew universe, yes. uh, which is Kevin Smith's universe. Which sort of leads the question, and there's like a couple of theories online now where they're saying, wait a minute, so are you saying that the MCU and the VU Skew universe are sort of in the same universe? No, they're not, because he's <laughs> shooting for more rat. <laughs> <laughs> And he's older now than he was yes, in the original Yes, that is camera. true. It but was a nice moment to uh, it was a very see nice moment. Yeah. Captain Marvel giving Stanley the forehead. <laughs> 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 All right, I think we've talked about this movie enough. Let's go around the, the table here. And uh, let's start off with Nazu. Uh, what do you give Captain Marvel your rating out of 10? Wow, I have not thought about that. Um, seven, seven, what? Oh. <laughs> Flurkins? Uh, yeah, seven Seven Flurkins. Tibby? Six loading bars. Uh, six loading bars because it's the 90s and the yeah. computers are slow. Yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> that was, was the best that, joke. That was the best joke. The best. <laughs> 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 yeah. But then they didn't use a floppy disk. I was yeah. hoping they would yeah. use a yeah. floppy okay. disk. So I'll give it a five floppy disk. Five floppy disk because you wanted floppy disk, but yeah. they used the CD instead. Yeah. Uh, Del. I'll give this five point five nine inch <gasps> nail t-shirts. T-shirts. All right. Nice. Finally, Kai. I'll give this two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just a, no, I just want to create shock. Uh, yeah, I'm. One. I'm giving it. <laughs> Five. It like, was an okay movie. I'm giving it five general. something out of some things, yeah. <laughs> some yeah some things. That's how much he cares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll give it five Annette Bennings. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Since was... you missed it out, right? Yeah, I had no idea. I was like, oh, what a lovely, what a lovely grandma-looking actress. <laughs> I'm gonna give this. Uh, I'm gonna give Captain Marvel uh, seven Mohawks out of ten. Hmm. I think it's an okay movie. Yeah, although, yeah, yeah okay. would you yeah, buy it on Blu-ray? Mohawk. I believe, um, like the other Marvel movies, you know, like they're so awesome, Sudaba. No, here's so, the thing. Well, I, we I, expect this to be awesome. I too. realize I I checked myself out from most of these movies because I I enjoyed Ant Man. Yeah. The first one. I enjoyed Civil War. I did not like Doctor Strange. Didn't bother <gasps> with Guardians two. What? Did not like Homecoming. Did not like Ragnarok. 
What? Then I liked Infinity War. I was yeah, I thought Ant Man and the Wasp was okay. And then I'm not in. I'm not a big fan. Oh, Black Panther was not bad. I, yes. I thought Black Panther was quite good. So you you sort of checked out. From I this. sort of checked out. Like okay. when it, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. Like, you're just there for Captain America, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's blushing, guys. <laughs> this movie is still uh, showing here in local cinemas. Do bring the family. I mean, I, I think it's an okay movie. Yeah, I think it's a great. It's, it's, uh, it's okay. Okay. Here, here's a for test family. for those of you who liked it. Would you buy it on Blu-ray? Would you spend your hard-earned money on? Yes, it? I love the visual effects. Mm. Yeah, I would oh, buy it for the technical the aspects of, of it. Sam Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Kai will buy it for Captain America in the post-credits scene. No, yeah. no that'll be an end game. <laughs> no, it won't be the same scene. Okay, okay, I'll buy it. Okay, you'll buy it. <laughs> All right, so it's still showing here at local cinemas. Do take the family, go and check it out. It's an okay entry into the MCU, and I think it's the well, I won't say perfect, but it's an okay pre-ensemble to what is coming next month, which is Marvel Studios' biggest movie ever. It's Avengers: Endgame, which is coming out at the end of April. We are very excited about that and let's move on to our last bit of the show which is that's right it's and it's what else we have been watching besides captain marvel let's mix it up a bit let's start off with tibi I finished uh, the Umbrella Academy. Oh, what did you think of it? I, I loved it. You loved it? I, it's a breath of fresh air in terms of superhero series for me. Because most of the powers of the superheroes in the Umbrella Academy, I, I've never seen in other superhero series. Mm. And I like Ellen Page and she's in it and kept me throughout the season, I guess. I watched half of it, about mm-hmm. half of it, like up to episode five. And I'm finding it very hard to get back into it. What? I don't know. I I, I don't know why. I finished in three days. Okay. Del, up a little bit. I'm rewatching Game of Thrones and uh, watching it the second time, I understand more because the first time, you know, you're watching week by week and then season by season, there's uh, such a big gap in between and you kind of forget, or I kind of forget who is who, like which king is what land and there's so many names. So uh, now I have a better idea. I'm in season three and uh, a few more to go before the big finale. Final season eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nikkei, how about that? I finished Big Little Lies. It's the mini series that stars Nicole Kidman, Reese Witherspoon, Sh- Shannon Woodley, and Zoe Kravis. Okay. They're, they won a lot of Emmys. This series and it's it's really good. Um, I really like the way it's directed because it's only a seven episode series, a mini series, and it's about like these women. They have like their own problems, like like the housewife and like going through like um domestic violence and then bullying their kids bullying and all that mm. but the way it was told each episode is like peeling off layer to layer to layer on each character and the directing and storytelling of the series is perfection mm. and you mentioned like that's a star started cast right there yes, for this series yeah. oh. Nicole Kidman performance is amazing I, I, I should check yeah. this out Naz Nazu up a I finished watching all the How to Train Your Dragon no episodes Oh, oh. Series, TV, series. Oh. TV series. Yeah, because I was so gutted after How to Train Your Dragon 3. So I just wanted... You didn't like it? No, I loved it, but oh, I was so okay. sad. Oh, okay, <laughs> I was, I was like, I want to see more dragons. More so. dragons. Fun fact, if you Google um, Toothless Children, it won't be the <laughs> drag children. <laughs> 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 so oh, oh, that's funny. Why would you? Oh, that's funny. Oh. Keywords, keywords. <laughs> yeah. I think you should you should actually Google children of toothless, toothless. the dragon. Yeah. 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 Keywords. That's funny. Keywords. Specificity. <laughs> keywords. Let's move along to uh, to Dell. I'll let Dell. So I watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh yeah, you did. Sorry. <laughs> Right. Hi. <laughs> uh, I have not watched anything because I've been busy playing Spider Man. Nice. Uh, I finished no. the main story yesterday. Yeah, 100%? We saw no. uh, your main... IG stories. Yeah, I celebrated on my IG stories. No, it's not 100%. I, main story is done, so I'm at 88%. Nice. So I'm really trying to get that last 12%. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, so uh, probably next week I would have had 6% of that. <laughs> All right. Um, just like you, I have not watched a lot this week because we had like a 
big show last week. Big, big, And big this show. week is just like recuperating and catching up with like life in general. I did, however, start watching a series on Netflix yesterday. And it's called Formula One Dr- Drive to Live or Live to Drive. I can't remember what it was. And I've never been a huge Formula One fan. I used to watch it maybe six, seven years ago. And then I just lost interest. Like I can't, I can't come back every weekend and watch this. It's, it's just a bit draining and ridiculous. But this documentary series sort of goes through the whole 2018 season of the Formula One calendar. And it's like watching a drama series that happens during the races. Oh, there's like politics between this driver and that driver. And then this person, there's a billionaire coming in and he's investing in this. So he's putting his son as a driver. I'm like, whoa, I did not know any of this. (laughs) But this is interesting. I'm six episodes in. It's a 10 episode series. If you have an inkling of interest in how Formula One works and, you know, the drama that goes on behind it, some of it's quite serious. Like these drivers, they put their necks on the lines and they're on the same team, but they race each other and then they crash and then the team gets nothing. Based on true story? No, it's the actual drivers oh. and it's it's a documentary oh. series, like 10 episodes of this. So check it out. It's on Netflix. I also have gotten a chance to watch again because I really love this movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> yeah. I really, really love it. I won the award, right? Yeah, I won an Oscar. Won best animation. Best animation. It's even better at home now because if you watch it in 4K and HDR, the colors are wow. Anyway, <laughs> no, one, no one's acknowledging it. It's like, all right, I haven't seen it. we don't have yeah, the capacity to watch it. it in a different league. Yeah. So, so that's the episode this week for the Wine Crew Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you are a new listener, we are from Bruhaha, actually. That is what we do. This is just our alter ego uh, where we come and uh, talk about movies every week. Uh, do join us next week where we'll be talking about... What's happening next week, guys? Can't remember. Uh, something. What so, movie is coming out? No, it's not, no. Something's happening. Something's definitely happening next week. I, Us. Something di- wicked this week comes. Us is out next week. Harry Potter three. Is that where Prisoner it's of Azkaban? Oh. Yeah, I'd like to thank all my co-hosts, Kai, Del, DK, TV, and Nas for joining me on this episode of the Monkey Podcast. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 the best.